Welcome back to the Yes Fitness Longevity Podcast, where we give you insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. I hope everybody's having a great Tuesday afternoon. It's beautiful out here in uh, Connecticut, finally, getting a little bit warmer weather, got some sunshine, or there's a little bit of breeze out there today, but it is beautiful out today, and we're looking forward to much better weather weeks to come. Hopefully, winter is over. So I got a little few house cleaning things to take care of first. Um, I want to thank everyone who participated and donated to our LLS, our Leukemia Lymphoma Society fundraiser this past Saturday morning. We all know somebody who or we have been affected by cancer and these funds can only help people in need. Um, so I appreciate everyone who donated, everyone who participated. So far we've raised over $600 and um, we can continue to raise money up until I believe March 19th. So if you missed out, you're welcome to come in and give us a donation or go to our page and donate some money. It's a great cause. Second, we are halfway done with our New Year New You contest, and it is a fierce battle, very tight. Anyone can win still. They've all made amazing results, and uh, I look forward to see what's going to happen in the next four weeks because no one is out of the running. No team is out of the running for the grand prize, and no individual is out of the running for the individual prizes. So keep working hard. Keep working on your nutrition, get your watering, get your sleep, get to the gym, and uh, you still have a chance to win. So we got some great things going on there. And finally, we finished up our first of our Fit and 42s for this year. And Fit and 42 is an all-inclusive program, 42 days, where you basically give your life to me. And the results were amazing. So I'm going to give you an example of a woman who is 59 years old, and she had been to her physician. She would prefer not to have her name said, and she'd rather not be on Facebook. So, but she will let me tell her story. So she's 59. You just turned 59 years old. Had been to your, her physician, and physician said, "Hey, you know what? You've been through menopause. Your metabolism's slowing down. Basically, you've got to live with it. And there's nothing more annoying than having a physician just brush you off like, "Hey, you know what? You're old. Forget it. You're done. Might as well just purchase the coffin now." And what she found out was that through correct exercise programming and proper nutrition, sleep habits, um, de-stressing, hydration, all different lifestyle changes, and a super support group from us down here at Yes Fitness, she was able to, in just six weeks, six weeks lose over 21 pounds of fat. And one of the keys to maintaining that fat loss is she gained over four pounds. She gained about four and a half pounds of muscle. So that's over a 25-pound swing on the scale in just six weeks, something she has not been able to do for a long time. And you would say at her age, hey, you know what? It can't be done, but it can be done with the proper program. So uh, congratulations to her and the other people in the program who also made some amazing results. We still have some people going because of um, issues with illnesses and things, but just it, it just proves that you can do what you want in life if you put your mind to it and you have a good plan. So don't ever give up. Don't ever give up on your, your goals and your dreams. So those are three things for our house um, cleaning here a little bit. So what I'd like to talk to you about, and I've talked to you about before, is interval training. And the reason why I'm going to talk to you about it again today is I've had this discussion with a few people recently in the gym, and it just continues to come up. And I think it's just so important to make sure everyone knows and understands the importance of interval training and doing it heart rate based. So I'll tell you a little story of what happened. We had a person come in to support one of our Fit and 42 participants, and she came and worked out with her. Now, this person works out at another local boot camp. She's been going to this boot camp for seven years, so she's fit. And uh, so I didn't have to modify any of her exercises. She was able to do the exercises we asked her to do. And she happened to come in on a day that we did our metabolic zone training. So we did our metabolic training. So it's our form of cardiovascular. It's what we believe to be the best and what studies show to be the best way to improve your aerobic capacity. Aerobic capacity 
is how well your body utilizes oxygen during exertion or during exercise. And it has also been proven with many studies to be the best way to burn fat and to burn calories. So I have two quick studies for you right here. We have a 20-week endurance training. One group did endurance training for 20 weeks. That means they basically just worked out at a steady state. They went the same speed, same incline for 20 weeks compared to a group that did 15 weeks of interval training. So 20 weeks of endurance, 15 weeks of interval training. So did five weeks less of interval training. The energy cost of the endurance training during the workout was 28,661 calories. So over 28,000 calories in those 20 weeks. The interval training group only burned 13,614 calories. So that is half of the amount of calories that the endurance training group burned during their workouts. But the interval training group showed a nine times greater loss of subcutaneous fat than the endurance troop. So the interval training worked less, five weeks less, and he burned fewer calories during the workout. But because of the amount of calories he burned post-workout, they actually had nine times greater loss of subcutaneous fat than the, per the team that did the, interval tra the uh, endurance training. So there is one study that shows that interval training is superior to endurance training. And then I have another study for you. For 15 weeks of 20 minutes per session of interval training, so 15 weeks, three times a week, 20 minutes of interval training versus 15 weeks of 40 minutes of steady state training three times a week. So he went for 20 minutes more per workout. In this particular study, both groups burned the same total calories over the 15 weeks, and they ate the same diet. So it was the same diet. They burned the same amount of calories over that 15-week period. The steady state group actually gained an average of one pound of fat. So after 15 weeks, 40 minutes of workout, for three times a week, they actually gained one pound of fat. Whereas the interval training group lost 5.5 pounds of fat and increased lean muscle mass. Plus, the interval training group increased its aerobics capacity more than a steady state group. So there's just two studies, there's many studies out there that show the superior effects of interval training versus just steady state training. But let's get back to our story. So this woman's working out of the boot camp for seven years, frequently, three, four times a week. So she's, she's somewhat fit, and she came in over on our, our metabolic training day. And we do exercises that are very similar to a boot camp. We'll do rope waves, or we'll do some kettlebell swings maybe, or med ball slams, but very similar type exercises. But the big difference was I asked her to wear a heart rate monitor. Then she said, well, what do I need to wear a heart rate monitor for? When I work out at the boot camp, I'm just told to work as hard as I can for as long as I can. So in a typical boot camp, they're going to have what we call a fixed work and fixed rest. So you might work for 30 seconds and then rest for 30 seconds. And you go from station to station like that. Or you might work for, for 40 seconds and you get 20 seconds rest. So what we asked her to do was we asked her to wear the Harvey monitor rather than do a work fixed work and fixed rest. So what will happen is her exercise will become a variable work and a variable rest. So what that means is with the heart rate monitor, she's going to work based upon her level of fitness. So as she works, she's going to work at that station until she gets to what we call the red zone or 90% of her heart rate max. And then we're going to ask her to rest until she gets to just below 70% of her heart rate max, in which in our facility is blue. So we asked her to work out from blue to red, from blue to red. We did that for 30 minutes. And then when we were done, it was very surprising to her that she actually enjoyed the workout better than the, the boot camp workout. And she felt like she could work harder. Now, why would that be? Because we allowed her to rest correctly. And when she was done, she admitted that there are times that even after seven years, when she gets home, she has to take a nap. She has worked so hard 
during her workout that she's exhausted and she needed to take a rest. Now, I had spoke to her the day after our workout to make sure how she felt okay and she wasn't injured at all, and she actually felt energized. She felt great after her workout rather than being destroyed by the intensity. And she had mentioned again to me that in her workout, she's told to work as hard as she can for as long as she can. So let me give you an example of what, what she was talking about and why that just does not work well um, with interval type training. So if we have myself working out with someone who is 55 years old, deconditioned, has not ever worked out in their life, and we go to do a metabolic workout session together. So we grab the ropes and we're going to work for 30 seconds and we're going to rest. Actually, we're going to work for 40 seconds and we're going to rest for 20 seconds. And we're going to go and we're going to do those ropes and we're going to go for 40 seconds. So after 40 seconds, she couldn't even complete 40 seconds. She is exhausted. And I'm only using women because she comes out of my mouth quickly. Whether male or female doesn't matter. This person's 55 years old, the deconditioned. And then as I, after 40 seconds, I'm not even tired yet. So now we get 20 seconds rest. Do you really think that that person who has never worked out before is going to be able to rest in 20 seconds and then go to the next exercise, which might be kettlebell swings, and then work as hard as they can for 40 seconds? No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen if it was a 30-30 work to rest ratio. 20 seconds for me, I didn't even work hard enough in the first station, so 20 seconds for me, I just pretty much wasted the first minute of my workout. And now I'm going to go do kettlebell swings. Or maybe kettlebell swings doesn't get my heart rate up. Maybe those aren't hard enough for me in 40 seconds. And so you can see that by only working at a fixed work and a fixed rest, it's not efficient. This poor person who hasn't worked out in forever or never worked out at all is exhausted. When they're done with their workout, they're completely shot for the rest of the day. And maybe the next day as well, they might be so sore. Whereas I might not have gotten a workout that I, that I really paid for because – I'm not working to my full capacity. So the heart rate monitor will give us some accountability. It'll make sure that we're getting enough rest so that the next station we can work hard. And it's making sure that we don't work too hard. So how can you work too hard? That's, that's, you can't work too hard. But you can work too hard. And research has shown that. So for example, if you run a marathon, Okay, it's a bit different than a marathon, but I have a study for you about this as well. But if you run a marathon, when you're done with your marathon, many people, if you were to take a blood sample and give it to a cardiologist, will show that they, they have the enzymes as if they're going to have a heart attack. So if you were just to show that blood sample to a cardiologist, it would seem like that person is going to have a heart attack. Now, it'll take a few weeks, but you know, you'll recover from that. And the body will be back to normal. But if you do multiple workouts like that, if you run multiple marathons in a year, you're not allowing your body to rest and actually you're going to damage your heart. Well, the same kind of holds true now. They finally have done a study. University of Pennsylvania presented a study at the American College of Sports Medicine Conference in 2018. And what they looked at at that study was if you are at or above 90%, if you're in that red zone, for more than 30 to 40 minutes total for the week, then you are actually losing the benefits of that workout. You cannot work hard enough, you're not getting enough rest, and you actually you're increased risk for injury. So you don't want to work as hard as you can for as long as you can. Too much, too much is not good for you. So that is, not only is it gonna help us get better results by doing heart rate based interval training, we're going to feel better, and our workouts are going to be better by doing heart rate-based interval training, and it's safer to do heart rate-based interval training. This woman was very surprised by that because for years she's been told, hey, you just work as hard as you can for as long as you can. It doesn't matter. Next station, work as hard as you can for as long as you can, and just continue to do that. And we're going to do that for 30 minutes, and you're going to do that for 30 minutes four or five days a week. I assure you, you're well in that red zone. You're well above 90% for over 30 to 40 minutes for that week. And you may think you're doing yourself good and you're doing yourself more good than just sitting on the couch and doing nothing, but you may also be doing yourself some damage, some very serious damage to your body, to your heart that you don't even know. You won't know for a long time. So that was one conversation that I had with this woman. And she was very thankful that I took the time to explain this to her. 
and she's going to get herself a heart rate monitor now, and she's going to work heart rate based. She's going to keep an eye on where, what she's working at, even at the boot camp. And if she gets to that ninety percent, she's going to she's going to peel back a little bit, because not only was it more fun, she felt better, and it's more effective. So a second conversation that I had recently was in my facility. So we have some new people, new new year. So we have some new clients, and. They kind of had that same mentality, more is better, harder is better, work, work, work. And they're wondering why I continue to talk to them about wearing a heart rate monitor. Why are we pushing? Why do some people wear a heart rate monitor and I'm not wearing a heart rate monitor? So I explained this to her. I said, this is why you're going to get better results and it's safer to do a heart rate based interval training class. Certainly. If we work you for 40 seconds and you rest for 20 seconds, you're done, you're going to be sweating, and you say, wow, what a hard workout, what a great workout. But that workout would have been better and more efficient than if you wore a heart rate monitor. Now, you might think, hey, I'm just trying to sell heart rate monitors. And you know what? It would be great for me to sell your heart rate monitor. I'll make a whopping 4 or $5 on that heart rate monitor. That's not my purpose. My purpose is so that you're the most efficient workouts. You burn the most fat. So you become the more aerobically fit and you enjoy your workout more by doing this. So whether you're buying a heart rate monitor for me out of convenience, I don't sell it for any more money you can buy it on Amazon. The, the point is you should be working out in a heart rate based interval training program. So the third conversation I had, there's sometimes I'll post my particular workouts and all my cardiovascular work, all my energy system training, which we prefer to call energy system training, is done interval-wise. I switch it up. The lengths that I try to do my intervals for, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer. Never more than 400 meters because I don't like to run more than 400 meters at one time because it's not a whole lot of fun. But it's strictly heart rate based. So I know when I'm going to run a longer distance, I need to run a little bit slower. And People will say to me, hey, you've been doing this for a long time. How come you're still using a heart rate monitor? I said, because my body is different than it was 20 years ago. You know, shh, I just turned 60. It's much different than it was 20 years ago. And I could probably feel the intensity as to when I'm at 90% and feel when I should go again. But why take that chance? I don't want to take the chance of injuring myself. I don't want to take the chance of not getting the most out of my workout. So I still use a heart rate monitor. For all my cardiovascular training, I use a heart rate monitor. Whether I'm running distance, which I don't do very often, uh, unless I'm get preparing for our one race a year that we sponsor, but all my interval training is done by heart rate based. And I want to make sure I get the right rest, and I want to make sure I'm working hard enough, and I want to make sure that I'm not working too hard for too long. So those are all reasons why heart rate-based interval training is better than just interval training. We hear about high-intensity interval training all the time. We read about it all the time. We, we know and understand the benefits, but take it to the next level. Take it to the best. If you're going to work out and you're going to work out that hard, you might as well be as efficient as you can be. Get the most out of that workout you can. So grab a heart rate monitor. I think I think you can grab a Polar Harvey monitor for 50 bucks. But if you plan on working out, that $50 investment is well worth it. Actually, I'm going to give you another story. A quick story here. Um, again, I, I'm not going to use anybody's name, but it's someone that did actually participate in Fit in 42. And this person is in her early 60s. She's kind of frustrated because none of her friends really work out or are as active as she'd like to be. She was, again, also, I can't remember off the top of my head. She lost some fat, gained some muscle. But one thing we did for her that really turned around, we turned around to the heart rate training because she's used to going out and running. She enjoys running. She does steady state running. She's done it for a long, long time in her life. She's run races. I think she's probably done a half marathon. Um, I want to say she's done a half marathon, if I remember off the top of my head. And I said, let's try this. Let's get a heart rate monitor. We're going to do your heart rate based workouts here at, at Yes Fitness, but let's try a heart rate based workout when you go out and run when instead of jogging. We're going to have you do a heart rate based workout. 
and she tried it and she couldn't wait to come back and tell me how much she loved it. I have now ruined her for life. She really no longer does steady state training when she goes out for a run. She strictly does heart rate training. She enjoys it much more. She feels like she's getting more benefit from it. And when she goes to run a race, her results are just as good, if not better. So another little story as to why heart rate based interval training is better for you. So there you have it. Some examples why. If you have any questions about how to do heart rate based interval training, shoot me a message on Facebook, post it on Facebook, stop by, give us a call, 860-673-4293. I'd be more than happy to help help you out. I'm sure there's people that watch this that you know can't come to our coaching center because it's too far away. But it, it's really that important to me to make sure that whoever's out there working out is working out as efficiently and as safely as they possibly can. So look for more tips from us down here at Yes Fitness next Tuesday at 3.30. We're going to give you some insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. Thanks for watching.